Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good day, good evening to you all, wherever you are in the world. Um, welcome to the second day of yes. the 2023 International Systems Thinking Conference here at Cornell University. I want to remind you that this event is organized by our graduate students in the Systems Thinking, Modeling, and Leadership Certificate Program, which is part of the Brooks School of Public Policy at Cornell. Today, we're going to continue to build off of our theme, which is Think X. That is the need to think systemically about any topic, problem, challenge, or crisis. This is illustrated, very well illustrated, yes. by our impressive lineup of speakers and panelists who are attacking some of our most difficult problems by attacking how we think about these issues or more specifically our mental models. The topics today include mass violence, climate change, sustainability, the opioid crisis, improving both K-12 and graduate education, strengthening communities and creating resilience, cultural sensitivity, and also we're gonna have a panel on improving organizational capacity and leadership skills. So I wanna remind you that yesterday, Derek talked about the fact that we have to see these challenges and crises and also uh, the wicked and everyday problems that we are facing not just as things that we need to fix, but more importantly, as feedback for us to pay attention to from reality. And that feedback is telling us that our mental models about these things uh, or these systems are often wrong. That's right. That's right. So in, in line with uh, our ThinkX theme, we hope that today's presentations will illustrate the deep connection between theory and practice. We designed this conference for everyone, uh, and, and we now have, I think, over 3,800 or even more uh, folks, uh, and our audience uh, of, of these 3,800 or so people from over 100 countries on six different continents and from all 50 U.S. states is also an eclectic and discerning mix of scientists and practitioners, there's policy makers, there's nonprofit leaders, there's business owners, there's designers and engineers, there's entrepreneurs and innovators. There's even artists, poets and, and scholars, of course, and leaders and followers, both systems thinking experts and also novices and total newcomers to systems thinking. And we welcome you all. This conference is designed for all those people. So we want to show that theory and practice are really two sides of the same coin, that they're inseparable, like a lock and a key. So I want to share with you just really quickly before we introduce our next speaker, our first speaker, um, two of my pet peeves about so-called theory and practice. You're going to start with pet peeves. Yeah, I'm going to start with pet peeves. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing that. Yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. Yep. First is that the general public and even poorly trained scientists misuse the term theory as being synonymous with hypothesis, educated guess, or opinion. A theory is not a hypothesis, educated guess, or opinion. A theory is the highest form of science. A theory was once a hypothesis in its infancy, but a theory is a hypothesis that has been tested and is evidenced by an accumulation of empirical research. So theory is more like fact than opinion, although science is ever evolving. So we rarely use terms like fact or true. Um, Darwin once said about evolutionary theory, which is perhaps one of humankind's greatest theories ever. He said, at last I had a theory with which to work. So work, practice. The great biologist Dobshansky exclaimed, nothing in biology makes sense except in light of evolutionary theory. And Kurt Lewin told us, there's nothing more practical than a good theory. Theory is just observable pattern in reality. And we talked about loving reality yesterday. One of my biggest concerns and my second pet peeve is people often say things are too theoretical or distinguish between theory and practice. The gist of the statement is that it's not practical, but it is theory that allows us to make cell phones, alter the genetic makeup of rice to make them less susceptible to infestation and feed the world, launch astronauts into space, land them on the moon, and then get them back to earth. So theory is always practical and practice always benefits from good theory. 
an empirically supported observable pattern in reality. So if something really is not practical, then it's not good theory. In fact, it's not even theory. Practice makes us find theories, which in turn help us increase our practice. One of our greatest minds and a great teacher and physicist, Richard Feynman said, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. And I would add to that, that if your theory is wrong, it's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. Theory is important because it drives progress. We now have a proper theory of systems thinking. That's a lot of what we talked about yesterday, a model supported by empirical evidence. We know what systems thinking is, which is something that you couldn't have said 20 years ago or even you know 10 years ago. And we know how to develop skills in systems thinking. Uh, we know that today, empirically. We will obviously continue to test the more refined predictions this theory makes and accumulate more evidence. But for the practitioners of systems thinking and for newcomers to it, the practice is in the four simple rules, DSRP, and in the various moves that we talked about yesterday. So today you'll see a bunch of examples, not of theory or practice, but of theory and practice. So they go together like, like peas in a pod, right? <laughs> So let's get started with the day. So you can see a variety of successful applications of systems thinking on very difficult, complex, tough issues. 